Hello and welcome to South Central Utah and the spectacular Henry Mountains. Uh, this amazing lofty mountain range sits in between a couple of the iconic national parks in Southern Utah. It's uh, a little bit east of Capitol Reef National Park and west of Canyonlands National Park. And we're out here on a beautiful, I guess, early spring day. Plenty of snow still up in the mountains. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey, and I want to share with you a little bit of the history of these mountains, how they form geologically, and then we're going to walk over to an outcrop here and investigate these rocks in a little bit more detail. So a little bit about the Henry Mountains. This was actually the last mountain range to be named and mapped in the continental U.S. Um, so pretty interesting how remote these mountains are here. You can see they're pretty snow-capped here, but we can also see there's quite a bit of dark rock that we're gonna go investigate. And this dark rock actually in some places is sitting on top of the typical red sandstones and shales, the sedimentary rocks that we know is uh, Southern Utah is famous for. So let me walk you through a simple diagram I put together about the Henry Mountains and then we'll head over to that outcrop that's nearby. So if we start here in our diagram, we can see magma rising up from below the earth. And the magma here that rose to form the Henry Mountains is 24 to 25 million years ago. And unlike a lot of mountain ranges formed by faults or by volcanoes erupting, the Henry Mountains are quite a bit different. They're actually a type of feature called a lacolith. And a lacolith is where we have magma intruding into the rocks and it causes these layered sedimentary rocks these famous rocks that we see in southern utah to dome upwards and in the process of doing so the rocks get domed upwards um, in a simplistic way the magma might just occupy this sort of mushroom shape here but it can also inject into the layers it's going to take the path of least resistance where it cuts across the layers we call these intrusive features that are thin that cut across the rock layers we call these dikes and in other places where these intrusions of magma uh, move parallel to the existing layers these are called sills and it's much more compl complicated here in the henry mountains than this diagram i put together but this shows some of the basics here uh, th that we might see so we can see that the the rocks get uplifted of course these sedimentary rocks are, are soft relative to the much harder uh, igneous rocks that are forming below. So after these rocks cool and crystallize into solidified igneous rocks, this might be the situation we have now where we have tilted sedimentary rocks along the flanks of the Henry Mountains. In some places we have the actual exposed igneous, igneous rocks themselves, and that's what we'll go check out here. And then in places we have these solidified dikes and sills that are found on the landscape. So we're gonna head over uh, across this little canyon here. There's a lovely contact between the red uh, sandstones and mudstones. We'll go look at those and make sure we can tell what kind of sedimentary rocks they are. And then these darker igneous rocks here. In any other location, I would probably make the presumption that these are lava flows, but these have actually been mapped as intrusive rocks, not rocks or magmas that erupted at the surface. So we'll head over there and uh, we'll see what we can see and see if we kind of agree with that, with the interpretation that's been made here and just kind of see what kind of wonderful geology this place has in store for us. So we'll see you across the gully here in just a second. Okay, so I was just over here on this ridge and I've hiked across the gully here and I've arrived at the, the contact between these Jurassic mudstones and sandstones. This is part of the Entrada Formation. This is the same unit that makes up the really scenic arches at Arches National Park, or if you've been to Goblin Valley State Park, um, the same material we see there. And we can see this sharp contact here with the overlying harder, uh, much more dense igneous rock sitting above it. And there's a little bit of a discoloration here, a little band of white between the igneous rocks just above and these tan to reddish um, 
uh, sedimentary rocks in the Entrada Formation. Um, let's take a good look at this igneous material that we find here in the Henry Mountains. There's a nice, nice exposure here in this slab. And what we can see are uh, quite a few of these white specks. These are all feldspar crystals. So this has what we call, if you watch my uh, rock identification with Wilsey series, we go over textures in igneous rocks. And this has a very pronounced porphyritic texture. That means we have really large crystals in here, mainly these white plagioclase crystals. But in, in places we see uh, some black, let's see, some black minerals as well. These sort of elongated blackish minerals in here. These are a mineral called hornblende or amphibole. Uh, and you can see there's a nice little surface on the side here. Again, the white specks are the plagioclase. And then we've got some of this black, these little rectangular crystals in here. This is the horn blend. So a nice porphyritic texture in the igneous rocks sitting right on top of these. What I want to do now is take you um, up this ridge a little bit higher to maybe illustrate the intrusive nature of these deposits in these rocks. So we'll work our way around these big sort of shattered slabs of this igneous material. And this rock falls uh, in the spectrum, intermediate composition. Uh, I know it's been mapped as a, a porphyritic diorite. In places it may be closer to a true, true trachyte. Again, nice view there. We're working our way up through this igneous material. And the next thing we see are these tan sandstone beds. So as I work my way up the gully here, we get another nice contact right here between the igneous rocks and these tan, uh, slightly cross-bedded sandstones. So what we're seeing is a series of these intrusions that have penetrated these sedimentary rocks exploited some weak layers. So we have the red sandstones and mudstones down below. This nice thick sheet of diorite. Then the top of it right here going up into this sandstone. And presumably as we look up the hill here, we can get right through this sandstone and into another layer of the intrusion. So now we're back in the the diorite, the intr igneous intrusive rocks. So what we've seen here is that these intrusions of magma can actually come in as sheets exploiting weak layers in the stack of sedimentary rocks and forming these thin sills, these fingers that stack sequentially uh, on top of each other. When we look at the contact between the sedimentary rocks and the igneous rocks, there doesn't seem to be a lot of what we would call contact metamorphism. We saw a little bit of color change down there in the Entrada formation, but not a lot of real pronounced changes in the texture or the mineralogy of the underlying rocks. And that probably suggests, and the research has kind of uh, supported this, that these intrusions that came through were probably, in the world of magmas, pretty cool already. They weren't as hot as like, you know, a Hawaiian or, or a, a, an Icelandic magma. So they were barely molten, partially cooled anyway, and we think they only were injected at maybe a few kilometers or miles below the Earth's surface. You can see some of the sandstone popping out here, red and white sandstone uh, below this intrusion. So a whole series of stacked intrusions parallel to the more or less horizontal rock layers that we see here around this part of South Central Idaho. Really just awesome. Oh, there's a nice view here looking back across the canyon of what's probably the same contact we just kind of came up through there um, with the red. Yeah, there we go. So that's that same sheet, um, that intrusion there. 
just right across here. You can see the contact just over here. And then we came up through a secondary one. This is all sandstone with some iron um, desert varnish on top of it. Um, but then below us here, the gray igneous rocks right out here as well. And then, so you've got the Entrada sandstone, a sill of intrusive material, another layer of sandstone that I'm standing on right now. And then just above us, another uh, more or less parallel intrusive uh, rock there. So pretty spectacular. Hope you enjoyed this little lesson on the Henry Mountains, their unique geology. We learned a new term today, if you weren't familiar with it, a lacolith, um, where these intrusions actually dome up the rocks around them um, and, and uh, flow into the surrounding rock layers more or less parallel. Um, just really spectacular area, this part of southern Utah. Thanks for joining me. And uh, if you feel compelled to, there's a donate button at the top of the banner. There's a thanks uh, button just below the video screen on the right. And in the video description, there's other ways and links for you to make any donation to help me make these videos possible. But thanks for joining me and have a great one.